Let's go, guys. We have another game here. This time we have the Mongols <laughs> playing as Feichan. Feichan playing as the Mongols uh, in the color pink. And in the color blue, we have our favorite farm build, farm build player. It's Divine DFP playing as the English. Welcome, everybody, to another Age of Empires forecasted game. Hopefully, you're enjoying this one. Uh, Divine is a player that I really enjoy watching. He's, if you like defensive players, you need to watch this guy. You need to watch this guy. And uh, you need to copy. You need to copy well because I'm going to put here uh, the number of villagers that he's using so you can just, you know, mimic his success. Because he's a very defensive player and he usually likes to turtle a lot. He's really like king of turtle. Like, he just stays in his base don't go out and uh, it's just you know the way pretty much Age of Empires 4 was meant to be played at the beginning no not at the beginning no uh, let me rephrase my words it's the way a lot of people want to play at the beginning where it's it's you know easier right it's like let, let me build my city let me build this like this looks really pretty um this kind of stuff like I really, I really love it. I, re I really love it. Like, as someone who has enjoyed Age of Empires 2 a lot since I was a kid. Like, uh, this kind of play styles makes me, makes me really happy. We have an early wheelbarrow. So, that means he won't really... Like, when you go for an economic upgrade like this, you won't really have the motivation to go in the field Asia and attack your enemy right away right so he's gonna be having a delayed fetal age and when you fight against the mongols usually you have trouble but since you're english the mongols won't dare to go and you know make a tower rush just because those villagers have arrows and there's nothing you can do about it i would be very funny you can actually put a tower here it's a like a delayed tower like a surprise after he, he gets here, he... Oh, actually, there's a tower here. So, in this case, the Mongols just, you know, just play, like, let's age up as soon as possible, and let's take it from there, because there's nothing you can do about it. And the early horseman is just... It's bad. It's really bad. I tried so many times. I like the idea of early horsemen. I really do. I like the idea that you can have horsemen in the dark cage and your opponent doesn't i really like that idea a lot but they, they they're just so weak like i don't know what what kind of horseman is that and sending horsemen here is a huge investment like obviously these archers are not gonna do much against those those horsemen but they are they also cost a lot so you need to be fast and you need to decide but i like it and look at that, this is our new toy, obviously a new patch game, and with that, the Abbey of Kings now give you a king for free, after it's, com after it's finished. So this is huge, this is huge. Like, you might think it's not a big deal, but it's actually, it actually is, because it gives you resources. Like, normally you will spend resources for this one, and you will get behind. And if you don't kill anyone with the king, then it's just gonna be, like... You know, a waste of resources. You go, you might as well went to the to the consing hall and you know play the Lombos and that's it. Now I'm very curious about how a player like Divine can actually pull his strategy off with the Abbey of Kings. Because Abbey of Kings is really a more offensive landmark. Like not don't get me wrong, the Lombos are really scary when they, they push. But Abbey of Kings is more like you need to go there to the base right and the lombos if you want to play defensively lombos are great because they have extra attack speed they attack from distance you have the town centers next to you and it's just gonna it's just gonna be easy for you to defend with those lombos so it looks like uh, my guess is that divine will go and raid his opponent uh unraidable base here but couple of pastures here love to have those pastures at the beginning when you have the oval like this 
It, nothing make, makes me more happy. Oh my god, that's a really far goal. Nothing makes me more happy than having an Uvu next to your town center. So that you can put those early pastures here. And it, it, it feels so good just to have those ships already there. Like the earlier you put that pasture, the better it is for you. Because you're just gonna have the ship earlier. And of course, you, you can go to, to the deer and everything. But this is gonna stay forever in the game. Forever, unless they, you know, they burn your pastures. But there is, the king is here. 200 resources for free. And most likely, you know, he's just going to try to harass his opponent. Now, it looks like the Mongols don't want to trade. Apparently, that's uh, that's really interesting because your opponent is actually going to town centers. You actually have the choice to trade if you want. And if you don't, I feel like you're going to get behind. Like trade is such a powerful strategy, especially with the Mongols where they can get extra resources. They they go faster. Like the Mongols feels like the best civilization to play with trade. And, and it is, it is. So, these trade posts, like, while not maybe the best position for you, probably is your only choice. Like, you can put a market here, and they're just gonna walk, like, in a diagonal line, just like this. Look at the king. Hand handsome king. Handsome king here. Take a screenshot of the king. There you go. The king is back, guys. I'm gonna show the Kang that his arrows don't mean anything. Three pastures? Now that's a very economic build. It's a very, very economic build. Farm transition is starting for the divine. This is the greediest player. This is... Usually when you play against the English, I'm like... Anxious, like... Someone is gonna attack me soon. With Lombos. And it's gonna make my life so hard. And... But when you play against Divine, you kind of know, like, this, this guy is just gonna play farm build. Like, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be having a really good time here. Uh, you, you you have the time to, to do your thing. I mean, this knight actually accomplished a lot. This knight really accomplished a lot. Like, fate doesn't really fall into the trap. Another pasture here. Who, who needs units when you can have sheep? Just trying to go castle, you know, as soon as possible. A couple of towers here. I say a couple. It's actually three here. A couple of towers. The Khan is just trying to take the the king one arrow at a time. It, it only does one damage, so after 150 arrows, he's good to go. All right, we're gonna get back to these guys later. The king tired of this. Wanna charge? Actually, never mind. Economic upgrades going out for Divine. All those three upgrades pretty much at the same time. You even get Forestry. Which is an upgrade that a lot of people forget. Not actually that big of a deal, but... There are better upgrades to have. But he, he gets all of them. He gets all of them. More farms for Divine. As usual. Gonna be very safe in his base. But there's nothing the Mongol can do about it. Other than building more pastures. Look at that. Pastures into castle. The new strategy, guys. And I don't see... I don't, I don't say this like for joke or something. Like, i never seen this before, truly. i, I never seen this kind of strategy before. Like, fast castle Mongol? Like, a pretty much naked castle? That's that's not something you see every day. It's a king, no problem. I'm gonna heal myself. Um, it's gonna be the step read up, so there is no option for the trade for Feichan. Now, the step read up actually a very good landmark. It will give you extra fifty percent gold for every, you know, every drop off. 
So it's actually quite good. It's actually very, very good. Like, instead of having 1,000 gold mine, you will have 1,500. So it's, uh, it's it's quite good. You have the white tower. With, I was going to say one villager, but it's going to be eight villagers. Look at that. How he plans his city. It's actually hard to do. It's actually really hard to do. Like, okay, I'm going to put my farms here. And this is the space where I'm going to put the white tower. And this town center is going to protect the farm. This town center is going to protect the farm. This white tower is going to protect the farm. There's nothing you can do about it. Like this. Like this white tower here basically guarantees that I still can live without army. Because there's nothing you can do about entering into my base. Like really there's nothing. Like a couple of archery range of course. Are probably going to see some crossbows here from from divine suspecting his opponent probably will go for man at arms or kashix it's always good to see like you already have the farm transition let's take a look with a with a sheep transition that's a that's a lot of pastures eight pastures here under this uvu it's just gonna give you a lot of a lot of sheep. A lot of sheep. You won't really need to worry about the sheep. And Divine reaches the castle -ish. I have a couple of crossbows in queue. Just in case. And meanwhile, we're just chilling, guys. We're just chilling. Let's go back to income per minute. <laughs> Are we seeing a fast Imperial? Don't tell me this. Don't tell me this. I think... Oh my god. And she's actually doing faster than, than Divine. And she has the... Kaganate... Oh my god. Oh my god. Just your... Casual 12th minute Kaganate Palace. Oh my god, this is such a... What a game. What a game. I, I, like, I'm so happy to see this armor because it's basically gambling. And I, I'm always like, what's going to happen next? What, what what unit is going to get? If you don't know about this one, uh, it doesn't say specifically which units you can get, but you can get palace guards. You can get nest of pits. Peace. You can get the Hui Hui Pao, the unique uh, Chewy Shay for, for the Mongols. Like that. Kaganate Palace, it's there, and it's gonna be the Nest of Bees. Nice, nice. Uh, always welcome to have a Nest of Bees. Now, they came with an upgrade. No, they do have the upgrade for like the upgrade they get in the Imperial Age where they have an extra, an extra bee, an extra bee, and makes sense to go in fast Imperial into Kaganate Palace. Makes a lot of sense to me. Especially now it makes sense why she put the town center next to the Uvu. She needs that food. She cannot go out in the map. That's too risky. You will need army for that. We only have three towers. The step readout. And that's it. Gotta get that tent to get those relics. Actually, Divide not really interested in relics. You also don't have a monastery. Never mind. Monastery also coming here. And Divine, it's only 200 gold away from aging up into the... Oh my god. Now, we haven't talked about this. This can, in the Imperial Age, go for 24 damage. 24 damage. So, before, you, you, you thought it's gonna be your average scout will only give you 1 damage, right? But in the Imperial Age, the can have 24 range attack so did this and he attacks while moving so technically he can come here he has 450 hp he can just walk here and a bunch of villagers either either they die either they uh, uh, they get low hp and uh, he can definitely do that and, and i think that's that's what he's gonna do now look at this oh my god the hui hui pao the can is gonna be dealing with some units here he knows he cannot underestimate the power of the can. That's 24 damage. 
elite knights coming here. I think this is the one from the Rus. I think this is the Rus knight. I have a feeling. Like, Fei Chan just getting free army, you know. I'm Berkshire. It's finished. Now, remember the Berkshire got nerfed? It actually has less... I'm not talking about that, but it has a lot of... Uh, it does have a lot of range, but they reduce, I think, 0.5 tiles. So it is a nerf. It is a nerf. It's a small nerf, but it is a nerf. It's still very good. It's still, it's still very good. The Khan. The Khan is on fire. The Khan already killed six villagers, man. Oh my god. Hey, King, you need to step up your game, because the can is actually doing work. Oh, look at that! <laughs> They're not against the crossbow! They do so much damage! And you know what's the worst thing? If you kill it, it will come back again. After two minutes, of course. Meanwhile, looks like the Vine is gonna go for the mana arms. Are we gonna see Mangurai? We are seeing Mangurai, where these are elite Mangurais. And upgrades are just coming for Faye. Where, where is the blacksmith? Oh, there you go. Blacksmith coming here. Next with... Uh... No, with... So it's going to be a lot of stables, so most likely going to be a lot of Keshiks coming from here. And we're going to have biology research right away. Those Keshiks going to have more, more HP. The Kang just trying to bully the king. Look at that, you only have 4 armor, I have 24. It's 20 damage for each arrow. The Kang is on fire. Cannon emplacements coming here. Definitely, definitely the the upgrade you want to have. Like you want to use the stone for the cannons. That's the best thing you can do because th these cannons are just are, are just going to save you if you don't have much army. And Cannoneer is going for Divine. Both players, one playing farm build, one playing ship build. The Kang just trying to get some villagers here. Beautiful play by, by Faye. I, I never thought about it. That was This is genius strategy. This is genius strategy here. The King is going to get bullied again. Looks like this time he's going to get it. The Kang is the victorious here in the eternal battle of the King versus the Khan. Another tower coming here. Let's take a look at the face vision because I have, I have a feeling he, she has a lot of towers here. More Kajiks coming here. Meanwhile, the Kaganati Palace. Where is it? Look at this boy. Look at this boy. Who says cannot deal with... First, gonna deal with the outpost. Oh my god, that Berkshire is on fire. How much rate? 18 tiles range. This thing... This thing can hit... Let, let's try to find a good angle here. There you go. This thing can hit from 18 tiles range. Oh my god. Oh my god. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful. More Mangurai and Keshix is, is gonna be the choice for Faye. Still. Uh, these are actually... That's the good thing is she has elite knights which are better than the Keshix. Because the Keshix are really squishy. Like... Uh, yeah, they, they steal health and all the, that stuff. That doesn't matter. Like, they have 100 late HP. They're gonna be very squishy. Divine Force to repair the Berkshire for eternity if he wants it to keep it alive what but there is a big boy coming here that it's gonna it's gonna make the work easier to take down this berkshire more man at arms coming here 
Hand Cannoneers. Hand Cannoneers, Man at Arms, the favorite composition for Divine. He's gonna get that upgrade. I don't know if he has Elite upgrade, Elite Army Tactics yet. Let's take a look. He doesn't have a University yet. So these Man at Arms are not gonna have that much HP as they should. Springles also going here directly from, from the White Tower. It's pretty much like Amazon Express. Now the next Hui Hui Pa will come soon. In one second, there you go. Yeah, be careful. Not, you don't want to lose this, this guy. This guy has 260 HP. So... Look at that. Palace guards coming here. From the back of Faith space. Now, if you think about it, it only took like 7 minutes to have an army of 50. So I don't know. When is this strategy viable? Other than playing against Divine? Looks like the king will get bullied again. Uh, get some villager kills here. Remember Faye, despite uh, having a lot of tricks under under her mind, <laughs> despite having a lot of tricks under the table, uh, she still doesn't have the military, uh, the economic count that the divine has. Divine is. Pretty much almost 50 villagers ahead, and you can see the income per minute for Divine is much higher. I'm gonna get that extra raid bounty just to get food and gold. Berkshire eventually gonna go down, and Divine is capped, so he needs to go. He's like, okay, guys, let's go, go, go. Like, he's gonna find face army here. Quickly, Pao decides, actually, I'm going back home. Mangurai not having incendiary arrows, so they're gonna be not gonna be doing too much damage here. But the Keshiks and the Knights are just gonna work wonder for him. The problem is those hand cannoneers are doing a lot of DPS on the back, so a lot of units for Faye are going down, especially the frontline units. Springle in placements, trying to take down. Uh, looks like a, uh, that was the nest of bees. And looks like Divine will will just put pedal to the metal, just. Push with the more mana at arms, 22 mana at arms in queue, 6 hand cannoneers, just go for it. Like, there's nothing you can do with your mango dice here. It's gonna eat face cheap. It's gonna take down the bombard tower. Springles. Gonna be dealing with the bombard tower here. And the Hui Hui Pao, it's going down. And Faye, unfortunately, she gets more mango dice from the Kaganati Palace. Which is not really the best unit you can have against those man at arms. Nest of Peace already out. Save the day here. And the bombard is already here. And that's the problem when you have all the villagers eating sheep at the same place. Nest of Peace going down, unfortunately for Faye. I, I don't think he, she, she can manage to get out of this one. King gonna get bullied again. Tower for the English. Marat Arms coming like if it was their home. Things not looking really good for Faith. And she taps out. Well played by these two players. I'll put a link in the description where you can follow Divine and Faith. If you enjoyed this one, I will see you in the next one.